Hello and welcome back to the Malt Miller YouTube channel. Now, obviously, as you can see, we're not at Malt Miller HQ today, are we, James? No, we're definitely not. We're somewhere a little bit further north than that, aren't we, Rob? We're up in Chile Sunderland and we're at Brew Lab. Now recently at the Malt Miller, we started to stock the yeast slopes from Brew Lab. We created a video about how to use those. If you haven't watched it already, I thoroughly recommend that you do. But that was only part one of the story. Actually, we're embarking on a journey to help educate home brewers all about yeast, yeast health, and how to really look after this amazing and vital ingredient in the brewing process. What better way to do that than actually come up to Sunderland, visit the facility that they've got here, really get under the skin of what they actually do here. Yeah, because Brew Lab are a resource to the brewing community all around the world, not just here in the UK, and it extends far beyond just preparing yeast slopes for us to purchase and use as home brewers. They do a huge amount, and we're going to spend some time with the team here now to really understand exactly what they do. Even this isn't going to be the end of the story, because over the next couple of weeks, we're going to have another video for you, which goes even further on the topic of yeast. Yeast viability, how to really get the best out of your yeast as a home brewer, and actually, if you want to take it even further and immerse yourself into this awesome and really interesting part of the hobby, there's going to be some amazing tips for you. So please, if you haven't already, subscribe to our channel, hit the bell for notifications, because then you're going to stay up to date on everything we're doing. As we've previously said, Brew Lab are so much more than just a yeast supplier to the industry. Let me introduce Alison from Brew Lab. Alison, can you tell me exactly your role here at Brew Lab and a bit more about what Brew Labs do? So my role at Brew Lab, I started here 24 years ago, which seems an awful long time ago. Um, I've always worked in laboratories, so I yeah. started at 16 at Vox Brewery in Sunderland, which was a regional brewery. Um, worked in the laboratory the whole time there for 17 years, so I'm not a brewer. No, what was your but, role there though for, in, in the lab? Was there one specific role that you had? I started as a technician in the laboratory, so my main role was just crawling about the whole brewery, taking samples and taking them back to the lab, processing them. Yeah. Um, so that probably has given me my best training for what I do now, because um, I'm used to everything. I haven't just come in as a, a academic, running a facility i've done it from crawling around from the start so I, yeah. I feel that was my best training ever finding out about pipe work in breweries incidents leaks what to look for smells in breweries sometimes you can just walk into a brewery and just buy the actual smell you know yeah. there's a problem there there's a problem there i was very fortunate because folks had three laboratories so yeah. they had a physical chemistry um lab that i used to do I would say all sort of gravities, colours, pHs, um, a lot of GC work. So quite advanced for its day. Yeah. Um, they had a microbiology lab that used to cover all the hygiene of all the brews that went through every day. And they had a packaging laboratory because we had a PET line, glass bottling line, cannon line. Um, so it was running about taking samples from there. Sure. Every day. So it was a really good mix of things. And we did training in every lab. You weren't allowed to just plant in one lab so we had to rotate around the different laboratories and I ended up in microbiology and I loved it in there so that was me bag I loved that so and um, fortunately Vox were very good at training so they allowed me to go to college on a night okay. and ended up going to university part-time and that's when I met Keith he was one of my lecturers yeah. he's the owner of Brew Lab at the time and he was my microbial physiology lecturer or whatever but yeah. we, he was a lovely fella and it was just very very interesting i ended up staying in the microbiology laboratory and starting to supervise there i used to also carry out all the the tasting of all the products we used to do every day so 11 o'clock we used to go up to the main office and everybody used to join in and taste all the products so that's a lot of good training in sort of um, assessing people's capabilities in picking up off flavours and things like that, which always goes hand in hand with microbiology. Let's um, fast forward to Brew Lab now. as it is now. And 
What are the type of services that you offer customers? So at Vox, it was one laboratory. Yep. At Brew Lab, we have um, different areas in Brew Lab. So we have quite a large training facility, which trains people on many different, you know, from start to diploma level yep. on courses. We store yeast for commercial breweries and we have lots of non-commercial yeast. So we have a huge storage facility for yeast. Um, so yeah, so the laboratory side, we've got the east side and then we've got the laboratory and we've got about 700 different customers. So at Vox, it was one customer doing everything the same way, yeah. one rule. And now we've got 700 little breweries, big breweries, and they all want us to do things their way and their analysis and things like that. Although the procedures are the same, yep. the way we report them to them, how we explain our findings, it depends really on their experience. So Alison, a brewery might send or drop off a sample of beer. What typically are they looking for? Um, so the most common analysis is ABV. Yep. So we're checking that what they do in house is correct, accurate. So what they're submitting to HMRC, you know, about the alcohol content is correct. And um, they don't have to do every batch, depending on the brewery size. Um, you know, HMC, HMRC audit is a, you know, quite lenient on the very small breweries. So it might be once or twice a year for their regular beers. Yep. Seasonal beers tend not to come under that umbrella. Some breweries actually want to know a little bit more about their beer, so they do what we would class as a baseline chemical, so that would be the alcohol, colour, pH and right. bitterness. Okay. So we, we advise breweries to get that done in each of the regular products at least once a year. So they might be testing bitterness by taste in the brewery. We do the actual analysis here, so they know a unit of bitterness yeah. which is in that product. So the following year when they've got harvests of the hop, yeah, the ingredients. You know, they can tweak and they can they can check chemically if it's still at the same specification. They might have to tweak the bitterness or the colour or whatever, sure. depending on what ingredients change over the years. Yeah. But we we normally recommend a full chemical, one half of the year, ABV the other half of the year. Micro wise, by law, um, unless you're doing no or low alcohol beers. You're not really pushed to do um, microbiological assessment because you've got quite a good protected product due yes. to the hops and the acidity and the alcohol in there. So that's why it's more important for no and low. Because you haven't got that protection, yeah. so you could potentially get pathogens grown in there. Sure. Um, so it then falls in uh, food safety. Yeah. You know, so if you're a, a, a dairy, you have to test every batch to make sure you're not... Yeah, got any pathogens. nasties in yeah. there you know the micro side really what you're looking for is organisms that shouldn't be there that's more likely going to cause a flavor taint or a haze or gushing you know yeah, or increased batch. alcohol or yeah. something like that so it's more for the product consistency rather than health reasons right um i think if anybody's ever going to be fairly off a beer it's probably off drinking too much the smaller breweries and now what we'll say is smaller breweries maybe uh, two to three barrel brew lengths five barrel brew lengths they're starting although they don't have to do um micro analysis they want an idea of what's going on sure. in the brewery so um some of them are buying microscopes to have a little look some of them are doing their own plate ups or they'll just send us a couple of samples a year I guess that's where some of the training comes in here as well, because obviously yeah. that's where the training court you offer the training courses as well. Mm -hmm. So to teach them how to do some things in house. Yeah, and it it starts with the simple how to take a re representative samples, because sometimes if you're not cleaning your taps and things like that, you sure. could take a sample out your tap. You haven't cleaned that tap, so you're rinsing in something that might not be in the actual vessel. Yeah, and it it's good just to get an idea of what's in your brewery, even if you're not testing every batch. You might have low levels of some organism that's not giving you any flavour tints, but it's an indication that hygiene-wise, you might have a slight issue, so that could increase. Things normally increase micro-wise from about May onwards, so you get... Okay, with the rising temperatures. Yeah, you yeah. get um, a lot of wild juice in the air, yeah. things like that from, you know, from just growth outside. People start opening the windows and things like that. Um, and the breweries tend to be warmer. So yes. normally a brewery is quite a cold um, place, so you don't get a lot of contam contamination, you know, getting out of hand. But once the atmosphere in that brewery increases, there's certain organisms in the atmosphere that come off the malt dust and things like yeah. that, that potentially can start getting into your beer and causing you more issues. So it's important that your hygiene's spot on all year round. So what we do at Brew Lab is, is 
try and advise them depending on what size the brewery is and get them set up on due diligence plans so yeah. what these are um the set sample plans for the year so we'll say you should be taking this 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 we even label the pots out and send them to them so all the pots are included in the price yeah. but we also advise them to do um analyze their water once a year so we can see what what's in their incoming water so they know that they're adjusting it for recipe formulation sure um and there might be other things um depending if they want to join places like Sabre or if they want to get accreditation by salsa because a lot of the smaller breweries yeah. do want yeah, salsa if you accreditation want to be, if, if you want to get your bottles in the in the supermarket shops, yeah, yeah. so there's a lot more analysis than needs doing you have to do things like heavy metals HMCs and yeah, I mean, it's yeah. a bit more but the the basic full chemical color ph fitness abv micro test stays the same you know you might just have to do it a bit more of it. so absolutely delighted to be joined in the lecture here theater here at brew lab with phil phil can you just uh, describe your role here uh, at brew lab i look after the training side of the business yeah. uh, so we have courses or anything, anything from one day specialist classes to online training through to nine week courses, which we've just started at the moment. So we've got nine weeks, people traveling in from all over the world to learn all about brewing and have the opportunity to do that. So I look after that side, but also I look after the brewing operation downstairs. So I'm a, I've been brewing my whole career. So Well, actually, let me just stop that. you there. You <laughs> just dropped into the conversation that you were head brewer at Black Sheep. So, I was, yes. So, <laughs> actually, let's, let's know a little bit about your brewing career, because obviously okay. to mm -hmm. become head brewer at Black Sheep, you've obviously gone on a bit of a journey to do that. Yeah, I have, yeah. yeah I did a degree in uh, applied biology in uh, not Well, it was Trent Polytechnic when I first okay, went yes. there, and it became... In two name changes, you become Nottingham Trent Polytechnic, not Nottingham Trent University yeah, by the time I left. Now, yeah. uh, so as everyone knows it now. And the beauty of that course, I didn't know it when I arrived there, even there was three placements while I was there. And I was from Birmingham and the first placement, they put me on a farm in the middle of Northumberland for six months. Wow. So I couldn't even drive. So I managed to crash the van, I tra <laughs> crashed the tractor, and all sorts on this private land. So, so I was, on a, I was um, doing an experimental farm, but it was on uh, field trials on agricultural products. So it, oh. it was kind of re relevant. So I was doing uh, barley field trials, which was really, really useful to understand varieties and stuff. Yeah. And I think they felt sorry for me in the second year. So they put me into a brewery called Harding Hansen's. Kimberley Ales Brewery, which is in Nottingham, yeah. which was, became part of Green King and unfortunately uh, closed down. Uh, so I spent six months in laboratories there, and then um, I spent six months in the Bass Research Laboratories oh, in Burton-on-Trent, which was really, really interesting. Yeah. I had my own specific research project, obviously assisting someone there, which was really, really great. So it was a really good grounding. So <clears throat> very fortunate, I did a science degree. Uh, so I graduated, and uh, as, as Scottish in Newcastle, as was, were recruiting at the time. So I... Uh, got a job there and the home brewery in Nottingham was the first brewery I actually worked full time at. Wow. I started off the laboratory. Uh, they did a lot of graduate recruitment through the laboratory. So after a, a year or two in the laboratory, I actually uh, was promoted to be start doing uh, as a fermentation super, brewing and fermentation supervisor to start with. And at that time I started doing brewing examinations with the IBD as well. So just worked up from there. Uh, so I was there for four years, but unfortunately that brewery was closing. Uh, so had another opportunity and then went to Everard's Brewery in Leicestershire. Yeah. Uh, so I was production brewing there. Also spent a little bit of time in trade as well there, which was quite interesting. So I actually uh, was training licensees to look after beer properly, right, which okay. was great to see the other side of the business, which imagine. was really interesting. So I was there for, I was at Everard's for 13 years and then went up to Black Sheep Brewery up in North Yorkshire and initially as brewer and then became head brewer. Well, that, uh, was, that so was a great. fantastic promotion, but also, I guess, a, a change of location for you completely. Oh, is it? Yes. Quite, yeah. Quite north, change of lifestyle. That's it. Yeah, I moved up to uh, North Yorkshire uh, for a short while uh, and then uh, actually moved to live in Sunderland. So I was commuting on a regular basis. So um, I met Alison uh, from Brew Lab, Brew Lab and we uh, we married and uh, I, I've lived up here for, uh, what now, about 12 years now. Awesome. So, it's, so all of that journey puts you in the perfect position to exactly what you do here for Brew Lab. Exactly. Yeah. And I know part of what you do is go out and go out into the field um, and help breweries. What exactly are you doing there? Um, we help and advise as much as possible, but people have got may have specific problems. So we're happy to go out and uh, do audits and look at specific areas where we can look at 
maybe they're having a specific issue and actually seeing them how the way they operate the brew house in situ is yeah. really useful so uh, for example uh, we may go and see a bottling line and just look at all the elements of how they look after the beer from intake through to through to the final package and sort of like that and be able to supply them in the full audit or full audit of their, their full operation and perhaps dealing with specific problems um, Alison also does hygiene audits so she'll go out and uh, she calls it crawling around the brewery so yeah, she'll, yeah. she'll look at any weaknesses people have in their quality systems so microbiologic is she's very experienced and very good at uh, getting to the bottom of um, specific issues people may have and such, and such as well so that's another service we do offer so anything really we can do to support brewers as much as possible we also take our training um, on the road as well so uh, we've got a number of different flavor anything from uh, recipe development up to um, flavor profiling and be a flavor evaluation we'll come out and do a one-day course for people uh, so they can train their staff in situ actually uh, in house so you're doing that yeah that's, yeah, yeah. that's so really we'll, we'll go and yeah. do training there as well as as well as here but and also online as well we've got uh, training packages for the, available online too so they can people can jump in at any level really to be able and we'll offer pretty much bespoke uh, training packages for people if, if, if they can help them um, you actually brew here as well don't you so yes, we do. the students that are that are here can actually get their hands on and they're actually they're actually brewing definitely yes um even people who do a, an intensive brewing skills course are here for four days there there's three days quite heavy work in the classroom and then they'll on the fourth day they'll go and uh, brew their own beer yeah which is really great for a great opportunity. We have uh, 25 litre uh, test kits. Yep. So people brew on brew on those and actually can create things themselves and use the skills that have learned. Um, we then can step up. There's a three week course um, where people can come in. They'll do two brews there. And as I said, we've got the nine week course where people are um, here for nine weeks and get five or six opportunities to actually brew on the brew on those test kits. But as we've got our own brew kit as well so we've got a 25 liter lots of 25 liter kits we've got a 100 liter kit and we've got 500 liter kit as well yeah. so if we th if we really enjoy what the students are producing we are very keen to actually let them uh, experiment on the larger kit as well and then we can sell that locally to yep. and just really to expand the knowledge of uh, people that people are doing interesting innovative brews here so we, we really want to um, push that and let people know what we're doing really well that's it's fantastic little, yeah. for the students as well you know mm -hmm. to see their their beer made on a larger scale that's and it, yeah. be put out into the public domain and, and it, yeah. actually get some feedback back on the beer yeah we, 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 we talk about the uh, marketing and uh, business setup side of the business as well so we, we, we teach on that as well so part of that is creation of a brand creation of a look etc yeah. etc so they can uh, be involved with that all of that process and actually be see their beer being retailed and try it in the outlet which is really interesting awesome that sounds like a fantastic mm -hmm. service thank you mm -hmm. thank you phil rob it's been wonderful hasn't it coming in here today and spending time with phil and allison from brew lab and understanding exactly what goes on here it's an absolutely fantastic facility both allison and phil have really given us the tour here showing us the nuts and bolts of what they do actually we've been really lucky because it's the start of one of their nine week courses yep. So we've got to meet the students that actually come from all over the world. So come, come with some, from some really interesting backgrounds. But this is just part one. We're going to be back with another video in a couple of weeks, which is going to take this even further. Now, it all started with yeasts and yeast slopes that we were going to stop from Brew Lab. What are we going to be doing in part two? We're going to be looking at yeast health. We're going to be looking at cell counts of yeast. All, it's all going to be about how we can make yeast make the best beer we possibly can at home can't wait amazing please make sure that you've subscribed to our channel hit the bell for notifications follow us on facebook instagram and twitter and we'll see you soon